Ember days are seasonal days of fasting and prayer, four times a year, roughly corresponding with the four seasons. The Lent or Spring Ember days are the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after the first Sunday of Lent. Join me in fasting and praying for our many needs, especially for the Pope's prayer intentions this season, namely for educators, for parishes, for victims of abuse, for a culture of peace and nonviolence, and for the prayer intentions in the comments below. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all goodness and love, hear the prayers of your people, and in your tender compassion, grant us all that is necessary for our physical and spiritual well-being. Renew your church with a surge of holy priests. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and your ministers together with Pope Francis and all bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth, freedom, peace, and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we hear the words of the Gospel, let us contemplate the heavenly vision that Christ has for us a world blessed by our generous, merciful, and peaceful response. We are called to holiness. We are called to be like God our Father. Will we respond to this call? Let us hear the words of the Gospel according to Matthew. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you, because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. As we hear the words of the Gospel, let us contemplate our need for God and the efficacy of prayer. God knows what we need, and yet Jesus teaches us to pray the Our Father, because it is through prayer 
that we are transformed and made ready to receive the blessings God has prepared for us. Let us hear the words of the Gospel according to Matthew. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. And forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you are fasting, except your Father, who knows what you do in private. And your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. In the As we hear the words of the Gospel, let us contemplate how judgment belongs to the Lord who sees perfectly. In our culture, we are so quick to judge and condemn others, arrogantly overlooking our own shortcomings. When we stand before the throne of God, will we want Him to judge us and condemn us as harshly as we judge and condemn others? Let us hear the words of the Gospel according to Matthew. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite! First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. Benedictus Quive 